Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Palo Alto, California for SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE special two-day coverage of Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain. As people are starting to get ready to take that nap to go all out all night in Barcelona after they had their tapas and wine, we're here in California breaking it all down. Two days of coverage. This is end of day two in Spain. We're in the middle of it here and breaking down the analysis, covering all the news, commentary, identifying the trends and talking to the folks here in the Bay Area that can add value to the conversation. And our next guest is Bob Stefanski, who's the managing director of eLab, um, located in Palo Alto, venture capitalist, making investments and really a key player bridging Silicon Valley with Michigan, Motor City um, uh, here and bringing the two worlds together as the autonomy, autonomous vehicles in the automotive industry is under massive disruption and change. And the car companies know about it and they're not afraid of it. Ford's here, GM's here, they're all here. And now we have Bob Stefanski here in the queue. Bob, good to see you, thanks for coming in. John, thanks for having me on, it's good to be here. So I love this story and I think this is not really well documented, but this is the beginning of what's been happening for a while, kind of an, as an outpost to Michigan and Motor City. You have some satellite offices in Palo Alto or Silicon Valley, they're close to Stanford, close to Cal, close to a lot of the research. But now it's a change where you're starting to see Ford, um, GM, all the car companies, BMW, big venture fund as well, all here in Silicon Valley because right. the software defined Blank is everything. So, software-defined radios and 5G, big story at Mobile World Congress. Software-defined networks. The world is software-driven, so they're they're here. So you're you're bridging the investments, trying to identify the key uh, trends. You bet to help identify this new game-changing technology that's going to bring a whole new world together. And certainly Intel and others are changing the networks, creating an end-to-end -end architecture digitally to, to bring autonomous vehicles, immediate entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, smart cities, a smart mm -hmm. home. And we're seeing okay. Alexa, Google's got their device, okay. uh, and you're seeing smart cities. So what's the big uh, bridge being built around? I mean, obviously the cars themselves are changing. Um, what is this bridge between Silicon Valley and Michigan Motor City? Obviously that's a big part part of you know, Uber and whatnot. Yeah, you know, absolutely, John. You know, I, I grew up in Michigan. Uh, I grew up in the days before there was a single chip, I think, in cars. I worked for General Motors when I was a, when I was a summer intern in the early 80s. Uh, in the engineering group there, and, and uh, there was a very distinct automotive culture. I then fast forward 20 years, and I'm in Silicon Valley. I've spent the majority of my career here, here in Silicon Valley doing Silicon Valley things. So software, enterprise software, was where I spent most of my career with Tipco Software. Uh, we are now bridging these two things. We're bridging the, the automotive industry, as, as I think we all know, anyone who's paying attention, the car, it now has a lot of chips in it, right? And it's about to have a lot yeah. more. Um, the car is becoming a data center on wheels, right? It's becoming, um, it's becoming another mobile device, a very big mobile device. And uh, you know, the really neat thing is, with we're the only venture fund with uh, offices and partners located in both places. We have um, we have uh, you know fairly deep networks and connections into the whole Michigan ecosystem back there in automotive, uh, and of course we're we're out here in Silicon Valley as well. And you know, it's it's been fascinating to see after spending after having that early childhood experience, uh, you know, young adult experience as I was growing up in the in the auto industry and really kind of the heyday of the auto industry maybe the beginning of the decline in the 70s and and uh, in early 80s and and, uh, and 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 then having sort of spent the career working on you know the latest greatest uh, newest technologies as they've come along out here in Silicon Valley this is a fascinating fascinating time to see these two now f finally sort of merging together with with autonomous vehicles you know one of the things that uh, we're in, in overall concept, Intel obviously is a bellwether and they always have the long game going and make the big bets and autonomous vehicles and virtual reality is that showcase. But mm -hmm. what I find interesting, I want to get your thoughts on it and reaction to is that I shared on my Facebook feed um, a post by autoblog.com that says race for autonomous cars is over uh, uh, in, in Silicon Valley. And they were kind of pointing to kind of the obvious <laughs> things that people are seeing today, which is you know, kind of myopic and narrow in my opinion, but obviously Apple kind of tapped out of building a car, and I think a lot of people did, thought, oh, Apple should build a car, they built a watch, why not build a car? Right. Um, obviously, they forgot about Tesla's here, right? Yeah. So I'm not yeah. sure what they're, what they're thinking. Yeah. 
But I think they missed the point that it's bigger than the actual car. So could you share some color commentary around the mindset of Detroit? Because we're seeing that certainly Ford's not looking the other way. They have their yeah. finger on the pulse. Yeah. yeah. Others do as well. Uh, what is the general mindset for the folks in both ecosystems and how are they working together right now? Sure, that's a, a great question, John. And you said it right, right at the outset. Look, all the autos are here in, in they're, they're here in our backyard in Palo Alto, right? They've all, they've all really sort of migrated here over the last five, seven years probably. Uh, you know, GM is here, uh, Ford is here in a big way, uh, BMW is here, Mercedes is here. They, so, so they all obviously recognize that, uh, you know, that, that, that the car is becoming, you know, all about technology um, and they need to be, they, if they're going to be a key part of that in the future, they need to be out here and they need to be understanding that. On the other hand, um, you know, making cars is hard. Making cars is not is, is not a simple thing, and uh, and you know this is where you know 70% of auto research in the U.S. is still happening in Michigan in the Detroit area. Um, Michigan has a very high density of automotive engineers um, and uh, in integration engineers and integrating uh, uh, IT with the autos and so forth. So there's there's a lot of talent there. There's a lot of experience there. Um, I think you know the the frankly probably the the, the biggest and most interesting, uh, you know, thing in this bridge is going to be watch the cultures, um, either integrate yeah. or not. Um, and there's a lot of talk about who wins and the autos can't move fast enough. And that may be the case, but we'll find out. I, I, I'm not so sure. They know how to compete. And uh, yeah, there's and, no and way that, smart there's no way that Detroit's going away. I mean, to me, my, my view is they're very solid. And I think they got good self-awareness. And I think if you look at the signals, I, I would say that I'm pretty confident. It's just a matter of how they get reconfigured in this new value. Uh, creation model around you know 5G and whatnot, but I want to get your thoughts on on another point, which is if you look at like what the iPhone did, that created uh, a new class of app developer, yeah. and and that I will call them you know on one hand artisan developers, people who are yeah. composing, much more design centric, obviously, and then you still had the hardcore developers, yep. and that was you know lower in the stack, but also other harder problems. But when you talk about automotive, there are some serious technology challenges yeah. that require, I won't say old school engineering, but like really hardcore engineering. You're talking about you know, wireless, which is a physics issue. You have all kinds of policy challenges, uh, but really hardcore engineering yeah. and software development. I'm not discounting what the app guys are doing, but certainly there will be plenty of apps. I call that more the finishing touches uh, in, in, in say cars, for instance. What are some of those technologies? Because that's really where you need to see the classic double E computer science, you know, physics gurus, yeah, you know, yeah. the real PhD kind yeah. of guys. Yeah. What's your thoughts and what trends do you see in that hardcore area? Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the, you know, I mean, look, we all know that cars are no longer about just axles and engines and they're, you know, and those, those are hard things. Those are, but I, I think when we, when we make this transition to, to highly automated, to fully autonomous vehicles, the, you know, the technologies that, that are driving that the most you know the fundamental technologies and the really hard stuff are around uh, sensors right we're developing we're constantly developing uh, newer faster better further range more precise uh, 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 sensors so we're talking about lidar we're talking about we're talking about um, uh, of course you know mobile eye and, the, and what's happening with the camera and, and vision processing um, we're talking about even radar you know a 1940s technology that actually is is changing very fast and there's a lot of interesting things happen, happening AI is an old technology so, coming back down and re getting rebooted with cloud computing and whatnot yeah, absolutely. Well, and then and then connecting all that to the cloud, right? I mean, I think I think the hardest. I mean, I think we talked about this before. The, the probably still the the single hardest piece and the point of the spear on on this is artificial intelligence, right? At the end of the day, um, it's the same stuff that's driving virtual reality. It's the same <laughs> stuff that's driving uh, a lot of different things right now, right? But it's 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 also true in in uh, in, in self driving cars. These things, you know, when you make a car, first of all, it's got to be safe. It has got to be safe. You, the Department of Transportation, sort of the government regulatory uh, interest is in safety. To make a car safe, they have to be tested, 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 tested. What's that about? Well, when, you, when autonomous takes over, it's no longer John Furrier driving that car, it's 
the AI driving the car, right? The crash How do you make that AI smart? AI. Right. Yeah. This is fun. <laughs> this is fundamental deep learning. This is fundamental <laughs> d deep learning that you know the guys at Google know as much as yeah. anybody in the world, and Facebook, and all you know that the, the we all know about the arms race and artificial intelligence. But that's at the core of what's happening in self-driving vehicles as well. And and, and most of that talent, uh, the talent is is spread out. It's all over the world, but but there's a lot of it out here, and they know they need to. What's have What's interesting those about here. your background? You mentioned when we started the segment, you have an enterprise software background. I was in Silicon Valley, and, and you know, you've been very successful. It's interesting, we were talking um, yesterday and we kind of um, validated this morning on our opening segment around Mobile World Congress. It's a two show game right now. It's kind of a bipolar show. You got devices, the new phones, the glam and the sizzle, um, Samsung, you know, and so on and so forth, LG, Huawei. Can't wait. And then you got the telco show, which is yeah. the telco's trying to figure things out. Um, but what's interesting is what we uh, noticed is that there's really a trend between enterprise computing concepts, mm -hmm. network data center with consumer clash. Mm. So there's a direct collision question between the telcos, which service consumers, but they're, the infrastructure challenges are all enterprise. Right. And the right, number right. one thing that's key there is integration and op uh, ecosystems. Right. So you kind of have the right background for this, so you want to get your thoughts on ecosystem integration concepts where a lot of boats in the harbor, so rising tide will float all boats, we see that as a trend, mm -hmm. but also integrating. Mm -hmm. You mentioned mm -hmm. the testing, so it's not one company that's going to do all this. It's not one company that's going to do all this. And, and, and in fact, you know, it's going to be one of the more complex integrations we've ever undertaken, right? Because we're going to have to have those automotive engineers. We're going to have to have those, those uh, you know, the software developers. We're going to have to have the AI guys. We're going to have to have the sensor guys. And it's all going to the cloud ultimately, right? And, yeah. and don't forget GPS. You got GPS and you got, you got connectivity a lot challenge. of Ability. connectivity challenges, right? And of course, 5G, when 5G comes online is going to be um, a, a, a critical part of this as well. You're also going to have smart cities. You're going to have infrastructure embedded in the environment, and in particular the highly dense um, areas is where, where it'll happen first. It's not going to, yeah. you know, rural America and so forth, they're going to be probably driving their cars um, without the embedded sense for a while, but there are a lot of different components. We had, a, we had a CTO on earlier before, Val uh, from uh, Bercelli, he was talking about the cloud native architecture really Mm -hmm. plays well in this market because it's not so much about the one car, it's about the one cars in relations to thousands of other cars that are yeah. self-driving. So yeah. and it, it's a multi-touch data mm. equation. All yeah. right, Bob, final question I want to get to you is what are you investing in? What are some of the things that you're looking at? Can you share? I know some of the stuff is pretty stealthy on your end because it's pretty high end, but can you share any, yeah. uh, uh, show a little leg on investments <laughs> you've made or? Um, you bet, you bet. Yeah, John, we're, we're um, I, I, some of the, the, probably the coolest stuff I, I, I can't talk about right now, you're right, but um, <laughs> hint, hint, it's in some of the things I've already talked about. We're certainly in artificial intelligence. We are, um, um, we have we have a portfolio company in that, We've, we're looking at others. Um, in, in, in better uh, sensors, um, some of the sensor areas I talked about, we are uh, in the process of looking at companies. We have investments in, uh, you know, in the connected space, not autonomous, but connected space, which is also going to be a very big and important part of this. Uh, a company called Aperia, right up here, um, that is that is at the end of the day, they're tire inflation, but it's all about data. They do automatic tire inflation. Connected, they'll be connecting every fleet in America, um, and uh, so we're. And so it's know, boring little efficiency areas that really yield a lot of cash. I mean, we just talked about of the guest on about waste. Uh, Optimus waste disposal industries. Absolutely. And little things that are well, boring little, billion dollar in innovations. Little and things, little things, very big problems, right? And yeah. it's where you can marry things like tire inflation on uh, commercial fleets with data, with heavily, you know, with lots of data that we never had before, and then apply artificial intelligence to that to learn what's happening uh, and map, you know, an entire fleet or multiple fleets nationwide, worldwide, um, collect all that data and start to correlate and understand what, you know, there, there's, there, those are the problems that are, that are the, the, you know, where, where a lot of value can be added actually with these technologies. It's so. super interesting and I think you got a great opportunity. Congratulations, great to see the bridge between Silicon Valley and Michigan really moving city and, and I think that's uh, anecdotally means automotive but there's probably other bridges you're, you're connecting to yeah um, Bob thanks for coming in and, and sharing uh, final question for you while we got you, you got a little bit more time what premises that, that would you would that are you, are you betting on I mean everyone has a premise and you mentioned before you came on camera that one of your premises is that automotive won't miss mobility yeah what other premises are you uh, investing what theses are you building around 
you know, we're well. Look, we're uh, for for the. Are you talking about autonomous vehicles Just or in general more, for the mu- bridge, much, the bridge fund, and how you're looking at the future of autonomous driving and the connected ecosystem around it? What are the premise? Yeah, What's yeah, the yeah. Premise? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, the premise there is that um, you know we're in for what I think is going to be the biggest the biggest change uh, in the biggest. Um, the biggest thing to happen in transportation ever, but it's not just transportation. So we're looking at, um, at at areas that are not, you know, autonomous per se, but that are going to be fundamentally impacted. So services, you know, we're talking about things like insurance, we're talking about all the, you know, the shared services that are going to come out of this. Medicine is going to probably change, and there's some interesting plays there. There are, um, and so all this sort of periphery um, that is going to be disrupted. We're trying to look five years, ten years ahead, and look at how life is going to change, people's individual experiences are going to change, and how, uh, you know, new services, in particular shared services, are going to be enabled by autonomy. Bob Stefanski here inside the Cube, breaking down the, his commentary and, and direction of his investments, bridging Silicon Valley with uh, Michigan, Motor City, or really looking at the autonomous future of vehicles and transportation. This is the Cube. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more coverage and analysis of Mobile World Congress 2017 after this short break.